everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying an Orkney Peach Muddler. It's a very popular fly in the north, the north well obviously Orkney Islands, but north of Scotland as well. And it really, really works. It works well for the wild trout. Um, and it's well worth having in your box for, you know, even fishing like rainbow stock reservoirs. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content and be entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos as they come out. I've got my hook in my vise, it's a size 10 Kamazan B175. I only really tie these in 10s for myself, but I mean, you can tie them 12s too, or even 8s. Um, maybe if you're fishing somewhere where there's sea trout and salmon running through the loch, you might want a slightly bigger fly. And I've run on some uni 8 or in fluorescent fire orange. Uh, some people like to use white, up to you. Um, the only white thread I've got is like 16 or, and it's no use for spinning the deer hair at that diameter, so. I stick with the fluorescent fire orange today. Tail. This is an Orkney peach floss mix. Uh, basically, it's equal parts globrite number seven and globrite number eight. So I've got sixteen strands here, eight of each, and I've brushed them together so that the colours blend. Right. Um, if you don't brush them together. You know, you see a, a, a wee stripey tail between the two different colours. So, I've knotted them together so that I've got enough, I mean, it was twice this length. I've done the, I've, I've done one side already. Or I've used one side up already, I should say. I'm going to catch this in so that the waist is about the length of the body. Now, if I press it then you can see I've got 3-4 mil clear here for the muddler head right you need to make sure to leave space um, I mean you always need to leave space but it's particularly important when you're tying a muddler rib I'm using a small gold wire you can use tinsel if you like but you hardly see it um, and the wires just that wee bit stronger. Once I've tied this in, I'm going to come forward, just tidy everything up, and then when I come back, I know that I've run out all the wax thread, right? It's just back to the, the small amount of wax that comes on it from the factory. Tail length, it's up to yourself. A body length probably ideal. It's maybe a wee bit long, but you can trim it back if you like. You know, it's, it's up to you. The dubbin, is this, this is a blend of my own. It's a... I might do a video on how to make it, actually. But it's... The same mix, right? As the tail. Uh, so it's equal parts, Globrite number 7 floss brushed out and chopped, Globrite number 8 floss brushed out and chopped, and then it's another, again equal parts, uh, ice dub, and it's the UV shrimp pink, which is actually a kind of slightly yellowy orange colour, and the fluorescent shell pink, which is a kind of reddish pink colour uh, and when you mix them in you still it still keeps that true Orkney peach shade so I'm just going to take some of this out and dub it on and I like to dub this body quite heavily because I'm going to brush this I've cut the I've cut the fibres of the 
floss fairly long, about 15 20 mil when I've chopped it up. There are some shorter fibres in there as well for wee off cuts and what have you. But um and the ice tub's about 15 mil so when you brush it you can actually get quite a nice sort of halo effect. But you need to put on slightly more dubbing than you normally would to get that. So just get this started. And especially at the shoulder of the fly, you know, I like to like, taper it up, get this kind of thick lump, right? And when you brush it, that'll all just come out. And it, I mean, it fits anyway having that taper because you've got the bulbous. Um, Muddler head at the front. Hackle. It's a cape. It's you can see there it's died. It's I bought this cape um and it, it's like sort of mist dyed fluorescent orange or something, you know, it it, it just it's not quite a standard dye colour. And I've never seen another one like it actually. Um, but it matches the it matches the Orkney peach very well. If you don't have that, you can just use Sunburst. Now, I've tied this in, and I'm taking my thread right down to the eye with the stem. Keep your thread tight and snap it away. Right, keeping my head space nice and smooth. Right, you don't want it all bumpy. Keep it flat and level so that the the, the deer hair will spin. Then hackle. I'm using my hackle pliers because they're not the longest. A couple of turns at the front, and then down the body. Three or four. When you get to the back, you can come across your thread, uh, across the hackle, chase it around, and then just come up and. Make sure your ribs tight. That you should be putting this. It should be cutting into the dubbing and pulling that hackle down into it. Because as it, I say, you're going to be brushing it. all these. All the untrapped pieces are going to be brushed out. So when you get to the front, full turn in front of the hackle, and then fold the wire over the thread and then bend and break it away and we're coming with the velcro and you can really brush that I don't know how well that shows up actually on the camera but you end up with this hazy so I it maybe shows better if I do it like that sort of hazy blend of the dubbing coming right out into the hackle fibre really good really nice effect if you don't want to do that, don't do it, but look, I mean, this is this sort of thing, that the flies get better when they've caught a few fish, and it's because there's just more and more filaments coming out, and they get rougher and rougher, and it will, I mean, there will be more pulled out as you go, lovely. And it's a great attractor fly this, you know, it's a, obviously an excellent top dropper to be pulled through a wave, but you could also fish it in the point. I like to fish 
I mean, not only this muddler, but some others um, on the point with maybe like a couple of snatchers or like smaller wets on the droppers. Almost like a washing line. Very, very effective. Um, right, so the head is white deer here. And, right, the clump, some folk go with pencils and all that, I don't know, look. This is maybe a pencil and a half, I suppose, if you do that. But it's a good, a good bunch I'm taking off, right? Deer here's one of the few things, usually, when folk are learning, they use too much of everything. Um, deer here's one of the few things where this isn't really true, because folk don't know how to clean it and all that. So, I've taken off, you can see there, there's quite a lot of deer here. But you're going to lose a lot. I'm going to come through and clean all the wee broken and short ends out. A couple of long ones came with that there. Right, you need the, the butts to be nice and clean. All that rubbish there, or the under fur and all that, that's where it stops it spinning. Right? Spinning here is easy. If you take the time to prepare the hair, then I'm going to push this in my stacker. I'm going to clean the bunch, right? Which is a lot thinner than it what I cut off, right? You need to accept the waste. It just happens. stack it and I'm going to take it out. Again any short ones just flick them away. Right, there's a wee bit more wastage here, a wee bit more loss. Broken ends, gone. And now I'm left with it, I mean if you think about a marabou wing, that's about the thickness of a marabou, that a marabou wing would be. I would say I've got half, probably about half the volume of deer here. that I started with, maybe slightly more than half. Just taking out a few more of the broken ones. Right, so I'm just going to do this in a single spin. If you want a heavier head you can leave a bit more space and do two. But one's enough I think. Now the length of the collar I want it to be longer than the hackle, right? you can see in this one that I've already tied, it's a wee bit longer than the hackle. Now to do that, you need to account for what you're going to lose in length when the hair compresses and springs up. So, what you're looking for, I've just knocked that out of alignment there with my, in my hand, just stack it again, better. You can always restack it. What I'm looking for in length is, if you like, if you want it coming to the back of the body, I would say put it to the back of the hook, right? That's what I like when I'm when I can have reasonable collar or veil up uh, uh, on a muddler. I have my hair coming roughly to the back of the hook, maybe just inside it, but no shorter. If you tie it the length that you want it to be, it will be too short. So we'll come in. And it's dead easy. Two wraps of thread and then just put it tight and just allow the hair to move and it will, it will just do it. Right. And then just take the thread through the hair a few times and then sweeping everything back, get into the front. Watch you don't catch any hair. And then I prefer to whip finish by hand for muddlers. Right, 
but you can see I'm putting that enough to flex the hook like it's um, making sure that knot's well seated and another one Now, I noticed my vice was a wee bit loose. Now, I don't normally trim my muddler on the vice, but I'm going to try it here for the video. Um, usually, I would tie, I mean, look, I've got a few here ready to go. Tie a half dozen, or however many I was tying, and then trim them so they're all the same. But, Let's see. So, and I trim them over the bin. Right, I, I don't, I don't like trimming them vice, but I'll try it so you can see it. So I'm going to come in with my cut. I'm going to cut a kind of upward angle at the top there. Tight to the eye at the bottom, and coming up and away. I don't worry too much about like curved cuts. Then when I get to the underside, I kind of shallow the angle a wee bit. And all you're doing is looking for that sort of cone shape or maybe a cone's or like a flattened cone and just be careful you don't want to come in and cut your your uh, collar now what mess this makes it this if you're on if you're trying to avoid the collar you've got these long fibers pull them up you can slide the slide the scissor blade down them so that you don't cut anything else and then it's easy to avoid the uncut ends if you catch one or two of the, un of the uncut ends or the pointed ends the natural taper it's not the end of the world Keep going around, and this is now I can start being a wee bit fussy. Now that once you get the general shape, you can start coming round. I mean, it'd be never ending, really. You could. But as I say, I think cutting them off the vice is a better idea. You know, I'd hold it and you can... You can manipulate the angle a bit more with both hands moving and... But you should end up with something like that. I've just got to take the... The underside flat that a wee bit. Right. And then I'm going to stop at that. Knowing, as I say, knowing when to stop can be difficult, but I'm quite happy with that wee muddler. Um, certainly a fish catcher, well worth having. And I'm sure it's not going to be just limited to the Scottish Islands and that, you know, you fish anywhere where there's wild fish. This will pull them to the... This will pull them to the, the rest of the team, even if they don't eat this. Although they will. It might be bringing them up to make them eat another fly. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. If it was, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines, guys. Bye.